Fort Worth West Side, if cardiovascular inflammation sources you cite are curtailed to acceptable levels as verified by blood tests, lifestyle changes, etc., can they reduce or eliminate the meds provided follow-up is done? The whole thing about what we do, Fort Worth, the cardiovascular inflammatory markers, HSC reactive protein, microalbumin creatinine ratio. I'm throwing out some words, they're fairly technical, but I've done plenty of videos on them. If you have any interest in them at all, you can look up my name on the YouTube and look up CV inflammation or cardiovascular inflammation. Now, here's the thing. How do you decrease those cardiovascular markers? MPO, myeloperoxidase, plaque 2 LPPLA2, microalbumin creatinine ratio and C-reactive protein. Well, the most powerful things are not drugs anyway. They are lifestyle. There's been multiple studies showing what we all know or should know, you can't out-medicate a lifestyle issue. You know, I get people coming to me on a regular basis for worth, especially now that most of my patients come from the channel. The first few times, it sort of threw me for a loop. I saw patients that had plaques, significant evidence of previous damage. But when I looked at things like current insulin resistance, current cardiovascular inflammation. There was none of that. Now I've become very accustomed to it. I see it all the time. The first thing I mention is, have you perhaps had a significant weight loss episode, like 30 pounds or more? And sure enough, get that all the time. So yes, you know, a lot of you have read some of the Jason Fung books, some of the other things where he talks about, yes, you can quote, cure diabetes. You could quibble over the definition, but you can reverse these problems. No question. Vagabond says, Sojourner, what makes LPPLA2 so important? Let me show you. This is an inflammation panel, myeloperoxidase, LPPLA2, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, microalbumin creatinine. Those are the inflammatory markers. What causes them? Well, this is LPPLA2, plaque 2, which you were just asking about, Vagabond. So this is the bloodstream, and this is the intima, that single cell lining of the artery wall. This is the artery wall itself. That's the smooth muscle, and this is the, again, the intima area. So these are what we call macrocytes. That's what this is. This is plaque. This is fatty stuff between the muscle layer called the media and the intima layer or the lining layer, the endothelial cells called the intima. When there's too much plaque, you get into a process where we take friendly fire. That's what inflammation is. The normal macrocytes that are flowing through the blood start getting these things, they're called cytokines. They're different things that attract these immune cells. And these immune cells, more and more of them start coming in. When they start activating, they release more cytokines. So you get into this spiral of inflammation. The part of what these macrocytes release when they become what's called a foam cell, they release enzymes which are meant by our immune system to digest to break down that plaque. Well, that's exactly what they do. You get this liquid core. And this sort of looks like a pimple. And let me go back to a comment that I made earlier. You know, we talk about Tim Russert and him dying from a heart attack. Even though he had passed his stress test with flying colors, he had this process going on. Now, the reason I referred back to Tim Russert was this. They said on the autopsy that they did on Mr. Russert, when they opened up his aorta and his other arteries, you saw these, they said his arteries looked like the face of a teenager with really bad acne. These pimples were just all over the place. And you know what? If that, if one of these pimples breaks, puts hot plaque out into the bloodstream, that causes a clot. It's the clot that causes the heart attack, not the, the fat itself. But the fat leads to it by stirring up this cardiovascular inflammation. So that was a great question, Vagabond. I appreciate you bringing it up. Why wait for a disease and hope for a cure? I used to be an ER doc. My name is Ford Brewer. I quit ER after a few years because it was just so frustrating. Most of the things bringing people into the ER are things that should have been prevented, including heart attack, stroke, number one cause of death, number one cause of permanent disability. People think that you're just going to have those and that they're not predictable. Both of those are wrong. 
you, they are predictable and you don't have to have them. Usually it's lifestyle. Lifestyle is more important than supplements and even prescription drugs and even stents and surgery. But the current times are tough. Major financial impact with the lockdowns that most states have been going through. We've been working on a way to make this much more affordable with a subscription process. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. We've got two levels. One is the silver membership where you get access to our courses, a private webinar each month, and access to our supplement store and supplement recommendations and prescription. Or I would suggest even more so the gold membership. You can get a script for a Freestyle Libre and find out what your blood sugar metabolism is doing on a daily basis. And you can get a lab order for inflammation, OGTT, and insulin survey. You can also get a 30-minute one-on-one with me. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. Cost is no longer an excuse. So if you're interested, go to go.prevmedheartrest.com slash prevmed subscription or call us at 859-721-1414, 859-721-1414 or email us at myhealth at prevmedheartrest.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.